Before the ball game, the scene here at University of Phoenix Stadium was incredible. I mean, the ground was jumping. Fans from all over the world descended upon Glendale for pro football's biggest game. And I don't know if you can see it or you can feel it, but there is a demon in this gymnasium, a demon that needs to be exercised, the demon of Maricopa. Sean Miller has been splitting up his point guard role to start this early part of the season between junior Kadeem Allen and sophomore Parker Jackson Cartwright. And so far, the numbers look pretty good. What a game it was for Scooby Wright. I mean, that was vintage Philip Wright the third what we have seen over the last three seasons you mentioned earlier and we broke it right here on tucson news now he is headed to the nfl now the biggest of those injuries was to star hurdler nina haley who also runs as a part of the relay team she is dealing with a stress reaction in her foot so she will not be able to compete at the national championships however she hopes to be back and ready to go come july for the even bigger qualifying, and that is the USA Olympic Trials. We have talked all week about one of the marquee matchups in this game, and it pits brothers. Arizona senior safety Will Parks and his younger sibling, Delane Hart Johnson, who is a wide receiver for New Mexico. And you got a safety and a wide receiver. Those two could collide on the field come Saturday. Redshirting is for programs that have the luxury of depth, which this team does not have right now. And you've got to put the best players on the field to win. At that point, it was still a very winnable ball game. And so you have to go with that mindset to try to win. Some of the things I liked, I didn't think that the moment was too big for Khalil. He came in, he took the game plan that they gave Gave him and he made plays doing what he does which is utilizing his running ability as well as he showed some ability to throw the ball although the passes we, we saw were very much like what we saw from Brandon last year against ASU a lot of quick read type of throws the one concerning thing though that stood out to me is he ran with his head down the yeah. first two times he carried the ball he took on helmet to helmet hits yeah. You cannot do that. That is not advisable. I hope that was the first thing that Rod Smith talked to him about when they met on Sunday night, is he cannot run with his head down like he did in that game. The Arizona Wildcats Athletics Department lost two of its pillars in recent weeks. Longtime fundraiser Tom Sanders and academic administrator Dr. Gail Hopkins. Doc Hopkins was one of the first people to welcome me to Tucson when I arrived to work at the U of A in 2008. An Olympian in 1964, Tonight I offer you his legacy. Gail Hopkins won the NCAA Long Jump Championship in 1964. It was the first national title of any kind at the University of Arizona. <laughs> I could say he was a legend. We, you know, was, we didn't want to talk to him because you know he's an Olympian and national champion and but just the way he carried himself uh, around campus, you know, it's it just an inspiration to all of us. If you go to my wall in my office, the very first picture that you see is a picture of Doc Hopps, the very first national champion. I would always introduce him that way. And he was very much embarrassed and didn't want those accolades. He just wanted to be known as a man who was a man of worth and education. And education is where the man, simply known as Doc Hopp, carved out his biggest impact as an athletics administrator at the U of A. My first experience with him, with him was one of genuineness, you know, where he actually came up and introduced himself to me and uh, let me know that he was going to be there for me if I ever needed anything. He would always be there. Always be there with lessons, whether you wanted to hear them or not. Take notes. Always take notes. Uh, when I came here, I told him I didn't need to take notes because I could remember everything. And my first semester, I ended up with a 1.8 GPA. And he called me in his office and he says, well, how is that memory thing working? Every moment that him and I had together, it was a life lesson. I mean, even going to lunch, there was always a lesson to be learned from him. I saw him connect with student athletes when I was a student athlete. When you're 18 to 22 years old, you have some, some, some big dreams. Um, but he wants to be sure that you're looking at it big picture. Hopkins helped establish the A Club. He wanted U of A athletes to stay connected to the school. And for those that left early for a life in the pros, he wanted to make sure they knew the academic door was always open. 
you know, whether that was coming back for games, coming back for homecoming, but at the end of the day, it was about coming back to get that piece of paper, get that degree. His thing was to let you know that you can come back and finish, and we're gonna do everything to make sure that that happens. He always said, Richard, you need to get your degree. He, and, and when I didn't make it in professional baseball, Dr. Hopkins is the one who helped me to get back into the University of Arizona and secure my degree. Doc Hop served at his alma mater for 27 years before retiring in 2010, leaving those life lessons that his student athletes now pass along to the next generation. It's about the, those words that uh, you know a lot of people don't use nowadays. It, it, it's about credibility. It's about the integrity. It's about the honesty and respect. Uh, you know, and that and those are the words that uh, you know Doc lived by. I'm David Kelly, a great Sunday night to you. In the end, the record would show Trey Griffey's touchdown reception against hated Arizona State as 95 yards. And had the Wildcats won that game in Tempe, it might have gone down as one of the all-time great U of A plays in a Territorial Cup game. Nonetheless, a supreme effort by both Trey Griffey and his quarterback Brandon Dawkins, who did an excellent job of fitting his throw into a tight double coverage window. After that, Trey Griffey displayed a dynamic open field ability that we've never seen from him before. We know Trey's got ball skills. We've seen him go up and make catches, but the skills he showed in the open field on this play, special. Here are the guys on how that whole play came together. If you look at it, uh, I mean, David Richards was blocking. We had Johnny Jackson blocking. We had Nate Phillips blocking. I mean, if you watch the film, you'll see Trey streaking down the sideline, but then you'll see three, four guys, you know, getting blocks downfield. And to have those long plays, that's what you need. And Coach Seuss preaches if you don't block, you're not going to play. And then that goes for if it's a running play or if it's a, you know, a pass down the field. He scored a touchdown, so that was my first <laughs> touchdown, so I was pretty excited uh, for a throwing touchdown. Did you know he had that type of open field ability? I always knew he had it in him. You just got to kind of get it out of him. I remember, I remember uh, watching his bowl game. I think it was the Advocare Bowl. I think, I think he had like two or three touchdowns that game something like that so I know I, I knew he had it in him but um, you know if he finally got to catch the ball in an open field and show everybody what he can do with this so I was exciting. A day earlier than expected the Arizona Wildcats released their first depth chart it does not indicate who will take the first snaps at quarterback as I knew Solomon and Brandon Dawkins are both listed on the top line of note though sophomore Sean Brown has won a slot receiver position on the Arizona offense Trust Jarvis you. McCall he is moving back to the position he played quite a bit in 2014 that would be free safety and number 64 here that is Nathan Eldridge he'll get the nod at center a position it was thought would be manned by Zach Hamela before he tragically passed away earlier this month I said last week that the NFL preseason really doesn't mean a whole lot then why do I have a slight pit in my stomach in terms of what I'm seeing from the Arizona Cardinals offense? Two more tip passes today from Carson Palmer that resulted in two more interceptions. The second of which was returned by Houston's John Simon, 59 yards for a touchdown. Now you remember, Carson Palmer threw six interceptions in the postseason. He has three during the preseason this month. I like where we are as a group, as a unit, you know, down down Larry for the last couple games, down Smokey for, for all the games, and it looks like they're getting more and more healthy as we go, and, and you know, I like where we're headed. We have had great practices ever since the spring. Our first team offense hasn't done anything uh, to make me feel like we're not where we need to be other than turning the ball over. As you heard Palmer mention, wide receivers Larry Fitzgerald and John Brown, Smokey, sat out today. Fitz has an MCL sprain while Brown is still dealing with concussion symptoms. Last month, it was a flat tire that snuffed down Alex Bowman's shot at a top 10 finish in New Hampshire. Today, engine issues struck while the Ironwood Ridge product was running sixth at NASCAR's Michigan 400. He would end up 30th. Kyle Larson in the number 42 Chevy wins for the first time on the Sprint Cup circuit. Finally, for the first time in five years, the United States wins the Little League World Series and well, New York beat South Korea today in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, two to one. And that's my time for tonight. Thank you very much for your time. We are coming right back.